Shall we close our eyes in prayer before we look to his word? <coughs> Loving, gracious, heavenly Father, Lord Jesus, we look into your face. Thank you for your presence in our midst. We humble ourselves and Lord, we offer ourselves as a living sacrifice before you. Cleanse our hearts with your blood and flood our hearts with your Holy Spirit, Lord. Flood our hearts with your rivers of living water so that, Lord, your thoughts would become our thoughts and your words will become our words and your words that are life and spirit can bless us, bless our inner man to grow into more into your likeness, Lord Jesus. Help each one of us committing each and every person uh, who is gathered here into your hands, Lord. Bless this time and let your name alone be glorified in Jesus' precious sweetest name we pray. Amen. Amen. Uh, so, Brother Abraham was uh, suggesting me to speak on freedom from stress and anxiety. So, I coined the topic as uh, the real freedom that Jesus alone can give. As young people, we all long for freedom, whether we are young or old, uh, from the youngest to the oldest. There is a deep longing in all of our hearts for the real ultimate freedom. And... Uh, if we can see clearly what really causes bondage, then uh, we can more and more experience freedom in our, in our reality, in, in reality, in the reality of our practical life situations, we can experience that. Can we turn to this verse in John's Gospel, chapter 8, where uh, Jesus speaks about freedom, that portion we all know. Uh, Roman uh, John's Gospel chapter 8 verse 34 Jesus said truly truly I say to you everyone who commits sin is a slave of sin so he was speaking about truth making you free verse 32 from uh, John 8 32 we all know Jesus said truth shall make you free you shall you will know the truth and the truth will make you free and then uh, the Pharisees were asking Jesus verse 33 we are Abraham descendants and have never yet been enslaved to anyone how is this you uh, how is it that you say you will become free so then jesus was telling about not a political freedom or anything but a the real freedom that we can experience in our innermost being the freedom in our spirit and he's saying that uh, everyone who commits sin is slave to sin and from that we can understand that it is the sin that makes us bound or under bondage and uh, it will be difficult for us to comprehend that but actually uh, when we know what really sin is then we will understand it better sin is uh, i mean uh, many a time when we think about sin we think about um, uh, anger and lust of the eyes and so many fruits of sin but actually the basic uh, the root of sin is doing our own will our own self will you know in the context if you read that you know jesus saying uh, you know verse 32 we read verse 31 jesus says uh, uh, john 8 31 so jesus was saying to those jews who had believed him so those jews some of those jews already had believed jesus and to them jesus was saying if you continue in my word then you are truly disciples of mine and you will know the truth so of course you know we can now we know that the whole word is God's truth and Jesus himself is the truth. Jesus is himself is the word. Uh, you know, the, thy word is truth. John 17, 17, we read that. And uh, John 14, 6, Jesus says, I am the truth. So the word became flesh, John 1, 14, and that is Jesus. So Jesus is the word, word is the truth, Jesus is the truth. A equals B, B equals C, A equals C. So like that, Jesus is the truth. So Jesus is the one who can really make us free. Jesus himself clarifies that in verse 36. If the son makes you free, you will be free indeed. So, uh, but actually when we see the context, actually if you continue in my word, what is the word that Jesus was speaking to them, which we need to continue in or abide in so that we can become truly disciples of Jesus who are really free. Disciples of Jesus are the real free people on the face of the earth. Disciples of Jesus are the one who are bound to Jesus alone by strong cords of love and they are free uh, from all the other bondages that makes them uh, bound. So
so what is the word that jesus was speaking to them so if you look further you know if you just see the context uh, verse 26 onwards john 8 26 um, latter part jesus is telling the things which i heard from the father these things i speak to the world and verse 28 jesus says latter part i do nothing of my own initiative but i speak these things as the father taught me verse 29 and he who sent me is with me he has not left me alone for i always do the things that are pleasing to him and as he spoke these things verse 30 many came to believe in him and he was telling him if you continue in my word so jesus was telling them that i do nothing of my own initiative i am not doing my will jesus came jesus is almighty god the second person of trinity but he emptied himself as a human being and he came and lived as an ordinary human being in our midst he dwelt in our midst word became flesh and dwelt in our midst john 1:14 and we beheld his glory glory as of the only begotten from the father full of grace and truth so that was jesus life and jesus you know jesus dwelt among among amongst us in our midst and uh, he became a perfect example for us in everything so in with regard to the freedom from stress and anxiety freedom freedom from many sinful habits freedom from uh, many many things that binds us in this world you know jesus was the person uh, who ever walked on the face of the earth with maximum full freedom full liberty <laughs> and uh, how he experienced that freedom he says that i do nothing of my own initiative i do not do my will the saints john's gospel chapter 6 verse 38 would be more familiar to many of us in cfc the saints often quotes that uh, john 6:38 uh, what do we read over there for i have come down from heaven not to do my own will but the will of him who sent me and the saints john's gospel Uh, chapter 5 verse 30 i can do nothing on my own initiative as i hear i, I judge my judgment is ju- uh, just because i do not seek my own will i do not seek my own will but the will of him who sent me the saints john's gospel uh, chapter 5 same chapter 19 and 20 is a classic verse where jesus is proclaiming his total dependence on the father so what i wanted to convey to you my dear young people is that our freedom really comes when we are totally bound by the holy spirit by the cords of love through the holy spirit to our master to our heavenly bridegroom jesus alone actually the true freedom in our spirit comes when our self will be surrendered and when our self will be surrendered when we surrender ourselves then what will happen is that the holy spirit will come and flood our hearts we all know that verse in romans 12 1 i beseech you brethren by the mercies of god that you present your bodies as a living sacrifice acceptable holy and acceptable to god which is your reasonable which is your spiritual service of worship romans 12 1 so i mean when we surrender ourselves as a living sacrifice before the lord as a burnt offering you know romans 12 1 i'm not taking that verse because i hope that that is familiar to most of you i encourage you uh, you know all of you to note down these verses also which i refer in passing so that you can you know uh, in, at your own time you can go through th- those verses and ask the lord to speak to your heart minister to your heart personally so that that word can really set us free as we the truth of god's word through the holy spirit really makes us free uh, you know i am not preaching in a theory i am by the lord's grace i am preaching from my own life the freedom that i have experienced i am I I've been born and brought up in a very conservative Hindu family in Kerala in South Kerala uh, in Kollam district in Karunagapalli my hometown is called so very conservative Hindu naya family where I was a ardent idol worshiper from my childhood uh, the very uh, house I lived I'm uh, still living now after my uh, you know post graduation everything I came back to the same hometown and same home and set up my clinic here as a psychiatrist here and uh, uh, so the same uh, room this was uh, this is the consultation room uh, now and uh, this is the room which i used as my bedroom in, when i was in my school and uh, the same room you know i was even an idol worshiper and uh, i was uh, engrossed in 
അമൃതാന്തമയ സ്റ്റിച്ചിങ്സ് വിവേകാനന്ദ സ്റ്റിച്ചിങ്സ് പോസിറ്റീവ് തിങ്കിങ് ട്രാൻസ്ഡൽ മെഡിറ്റേഷൻ വിസ് റീഡിങ് ഭഗവത്ഗീത വെരി വെരി ആർഡൻലി ആൻഡ് യൂസ് ടു ദൈഡ് വിഷ്ണു സഹസ്രനാമം ലളിത സഹസ്രനാമം ഡെയിലി യൂസ് ടു വിസിറ്റ് ഐ മീൻ ഓൺ ദ വേ ടു മൈ സ്കൂൾ ഐ വുഡ് വിസിറ്റ് അറ്റ്ലീസ്റ്റ് ടു ടെമ്പിൾസ് ആൻഡ് പ്ലേസ് ദ സാൻഡൽവുഡ് സാൻഡൽവുഡ് പ്ലേസ് ആൻഡ് ദൻ ഓൾ ഗോ ടു ദ കാത്തലിക് സ്കൂൾ വേ ഐ സ്റ്റഡി ആക്ച്വലി ആൻഡ് ദ ലോഡ് മെറ്റ് വിത്ത് മീ ടുവേഡ്സ് എൻഡ് ഓഫ് മൈ സെക്കൻഡ് പ്രീ ഡിഗ്രി ടുവേഡ്സ് എൻഡ് ഓഫ് മൈ പ്ലസ് ടു ആൻഡ് ദ ആക്ച്വലി ഈവൻ ഇൻ മൈ സ്കൂൾ ഡേയ്സ് ബിക്കോസ് ഐ സ്റ്റഡി ഇൻ എ ക്രിസ്ത്യൻ സ്കൂൾ ഐ ഹാഡ് ഹേർഡ് മെനി ഓഫ് ദ വേഴ്സസ് ഫ്രം ജി വേഴ്സസ് ഫ്രം ദ ബൈബിൾ ആൻഡ് ഓഡ് ലൈക്ക് കം ടു മീ ഓൾ ഹോ വീർ ഇൻ ഹെവി ലീഡൻ ഐ ഗിവ് യു റെസ്റ്റ് ആൻഡ് ബ്ലസ് ആർ ദ പ്യുവർ ഇൻ ഹാർട്ട് ഫോർ ദേ ഷെൽ സി ഗോഡ് ആൻഡ് മെനി ബൈബിൾ വേഴ്സസ് യൂസ് ടു അട്രാക്ട് മീ ഈവൻ വെൻ ഐ വാസ് ഇൻ മൈ സ്കൂൾ love your enemies do good to those who hate you bless those who per, uh, curse you and pray for those who persecute you and all these things used to really amaze me uh, and uh, when i was uh, doing my second pre degree in trivandrum uh, uh, in trivandrum only i did my pre degree there in one marvenas college there and i was a host light there and uh, to uh, tell the long testimony short uh, it was in 1999 december 19th one sunday early morning around 6 am 6:15 am in the morning uh, i was alone in the hostel room i wanted to brush through the portions of my physics chemistry biology exams because there was a uh, you know some olympiad exam going on in that uh, going, going on in the college that sunday so i wanted to wanted to brush through the portions but somehow the lord had arranged the circumstances in my life in such a way that that fine morning i didn't have any peace of mind although with all my philosophies i had written articles on peace of mind even which was published in the college magazine that year the author of all these article myself was sitting over there in that single room room number 14 of the new st thomas hostel of marivenus college nalanjira in trivandrum without any peace of mind with that sense of vacuum or an emptiness and uh, uh, and because of my curiosity to know more of the truth I, along with the uh, bhagavad gita and uh, uh, vivekananda's teachings and all i had asked one of my uh, friends and got a uh, copy of the bible also one new king james version of the bible also was with me that time so in that time of need uh, i was sitting beside the table like this and uh, i didn't know what to do and uh, i got a inner in a glimpse of the infinite holiness of the god who created me and i was convicted that i am just a wretched sinner i am just nothing before this almighty god and uh, suddenly i felt an inner urge to open up the bible which was on my table and i took the bible and flipped through the pages and the verses which struck my eyes from uh, where ezekiel ezekiel chapter 36 verses 25 26 and 27 which reads like then i will sprinkle clean water on you and you will be clean i will cleanse you from all your filthiness and from all your idols i will give you a new heart and put a new spirit within you i will take away the heart of stone from your flesh and give you a heart of flesh i will put my spirit within you and i will cause you to walk in my statutes and you will be careful to observe my ordinances this were the verses which the lord spoke and made me born again the uh, the unfailing seed of the word of god the living seed of the word of god through which we are born again first peter 123 we read there and this was the word that the lord made to sprout in my heart and uh, gave me life uh, and uh, really flooded me with the holy spirit uh, that time it's a was just flooded with the love joy and peace of heaven that i had never ever experienced ever before but which has multiplied empty number of times over these 21 years uh, of my walk with my lord jesus and uh, and uh, you know that uh, after that experience even that olympiad exam i was uh, you know writing with the lord's presence there in the college i remember got first in that uh, olympiad in the college there ever since that uh, experience god gracious god gave me a religious appetite to uh, know more about the lord jesus to uh, to love him passionately and to read his word and uh, the lord led me to a cfc church there in trivandrum Uh, through a senior of mine one brother saiju uh, who is there in cfc dubai now so he was my senior in uh, college there and uh, he guided me to cfc church the first church and the only church i was guided to and became part of the cfc church early there in trivandrum i was uh, i got baptism the next month and uh, not the next month march 
2000 march uh, in delhi 26th of may i got baptized and uh, you know like that uh, then uh, you know uh, to say many things actually uh, if uh, uh, there won't be time but um, i have um, you know uh, uh, share, you know uploaded my testimony in the youtube also if you search dr sandeep psychiatrist testimony and or you might get some malayalam as well as english videos of my testimony and all. and uh, there were a lot of opposition from my home also because they were very uh, conservative in the family and because of their love for me so much of opposition was there i was uh, in the same house where i am speaking now about freedom i was in house arrest house bondage house <laughs> uh, uh, you know uh, i was uh, not permitted to go out of this house after i completed the pre degree before i got admission to mbbs that around 6 months of gap was there and i was under this house arrest by my parents i they didn't allow me to go to uh, any fellowship meetings they took away the bible uh, and all the spiritual biblical books we ha- i had and uh, and uh, i can say that even <laughs> during those times of bondage where i was not even allowed to read the bible or even allowed to go to meetings uh, i experienced a freedom that the that this world cannot give this speaks about peace that the world cannot give in john 14 27 and that is the that peace is the uh, peace of the holy spirit the fruit of the holy spirit which gives us the freedom also in our spirit which the world cannot give even i mean because of this lockdown and restriction and uh, quarantine and all those things and all we there would be so much of restrictions and especially as young people we would be longing for freedom or oh, if we could fly like uh, birds in the air like that we would feel but actually you know the real freedom even if we are literally able to fly like birds in the air we would be bound by so many things in our self will uh, but actually if we surrender ourselves uh, even i mean when we become born again it still that comes through a surrender of our will uh, saying that lord i do not want to sin anymore i want to please you alone like that only that repentance and surrendering to the lord through by entrusting himself to entrusting ourselves to him that the even now born again experience we surrender but actually everything in christian life also uh, happens through this surrender i mean uh, you know we might think that surrender is the opposite of freedom no <laughs> if somebody comes with gun and begin to shoot us surrender i mean how oh, i surrender uh, hands up like that we might think but actually in the paradox in christian life is that the real freedom comes through surrender and what should be surrender we should surrender our will our self will saying that uh, lord i do not want to do my will but i want to do your will in my life not just in any uh, you know some areas in my life i want your will other areas i will manage of my own then we won't experience the real freedom that jesus is speaking about the real freedom that jesus alone can give this is free, this is the freedom that comes through the holy spirit flooding our hearts and we becoming bound with the lord in our spirit um, i hope all of you young people who are listening to me uh, have that born again experience uh, if not also i mean i would encourage you in, in case any of you young people because you are youngsters uh, who have uh, you know grown up in the uh, church would have heard gospel many a time but may not have an assurance of salvation in case anybody is like that also you can cry out to the lord even now itself and Uh, surrender your life to the lord and say that lord i am a sinner cleanse me with your blood and uh, come into my heart and you can the lord can give you an assurance of salvation and i hope i mean all those who are even born again also I would encourage you to seek that experience of that fullness of the holy spirit where uh, we can experience a true liberty in our spirit we ha- we have body soul and spirit spirit soul and body first thessalonians 5:23 says the real freedom that jesus gives us is in our inner man is in our spirit and the holy spirit fills us what really happens is that when the holy spirit can fill us the holy spirit can fill us only if we offer ourselves as a living sacrifice romans 12:1 when we surrender our self will say that just like jesus did jesus is a for and he is the best example perfect example and he said i did not come from heaven to do my will you know even jesus didn't have any sin in his body he was born of the holy spirit but still he says that i do not want to do my will i want to do my father's will and I, I even john 5:19 and 20 uh, you know probably that is, that would be the page that you would be having now 
Jesus says truly truly I say to you I, uh, the son can do nothing of himself unless it is something he sees the father doing and whatever the father does he also do in like he does in like manner and the father loves him and will show him all things that he himself is doing verse 20 and the father will show him greater works than these that you will marvel now uh, among all the verses in the bible personally this john 5 19 and 20 are the verses which has really bless me to the maximum i would say uh, that are my the most favorite verses for me personally this john 5 19 and 20 i mean if you see it is just like a little child saying i can do nothing unless it is something i see my daddy i see my papa doing like that only jesus lived and that was a life of freedom many a time we want to do things our own way we want to think our own way we want to do and indulge in so many things that in our own self and that is actually the real bondage actually but if you can say that lord my will lord i do not want to not that i will not do nobody can say that only with god's grace and empowering us only we can uh, uh, we we, uh, we can uh, 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 abstain from sinning but what we can say is that lord i do not want to sin i do not want to do my own will not not even uh, you know outright sin but even other other things also lord I want to do your will in everything, even the all areas of my life, Lord, like that, if we can surrender ourselves. And what are the areas of our self-will? I mean, actually, our self-will, we can say there are three main categories. Uh, to uh, remember it very easily, this is, we can say, MSP, money, honor, pleasures. <laughs> that is what we see in the entire Bible, actually. Uh, money, honor, pleasures, you know. Uh, John, the same John the Apostle is saying in 1st John 2 16 that lust of the flesh, lust of the eyes, pride of life. These are our self will and this is the world system and uh, lust of the eyes, lust of the eyes is the world uh, that is the uh, money and the material things, whatever we see I want to have that, I want this, I want that you know I was enumerating some things that uh, uh, when we say money, honor, pleasures, last, uh, you know, this uh, money uh, and material things is the last of the eyes. Uh, uh, the same thing, uh, uh, Eve was tempted uh, by the devil in Genesis 2 6. I, don't, I may not have time to show all that, but I mean, I hope you all would have heard uh, uh, about those. Uh, correlation uh, in the entire bible about this this triad genesis 2 6 says about uh, sorry genesis 3 6 rather genesis 3 6 says about uh, the woman saw that the good uh, the tree was good for food delight to the eyes and the tree was desirable to make one wise so the delight to the eyes is the lust of the eyes good for food is the lust of the flesh and pride of life is make one wise so uh, money honor pleasures uh, you know if the same thing uh, these are the three things that jesus was also tempted about and also we see the same triad in many places in the bible uh, hebrews 11 verse 24 25 26 uh, about moses we read that uh, verse 24 uh, refusing to be called the son of pharaoh's daughter he was refusing the honor of this world and uh, he, uh, he did not regard the treasures of egypt that is the money this world and the passing pleasures of sin hebrews 11 25 that is the pleasures the sinful pleasures this is also uh, you know uh, turning stones into bread that is the lust of the flesh he was tempted in that point uh, jesus was tempted by the devil by showing all the kingdoms and the world and the glory that is the money and the material things and uh, you know to jump from the top of the temple that is the for seeking the honor of men and uh, Genesis 3 6 we saw 2 Timothy 3 2 and 4 says about lovers of pleasure lovers of money and lovers of self lovers of self is lovers of honor and uh, uh, the same triad Jesus says in the parable of the sower Luke 8 14 desires for other things that is the pleasures deceitfulness of riches that is the money and material things and worries Worries is actually seeking for honor. You know why we why we are worried, why we are anxious because we knowingly or unknowingly seek for man's opinion and honor. That's why we are worried and anxious. I'll come to that. So coming to the you know making it practical to young people, what are the things that we seek honor or why are we so much worried about? 
we are seeking for popularity the self will uh, consisting of these three parts money honor pleasure so first i will say about uh, honor mm, so honor seeking honor seeking uh, seeking popularity among your friends yielding to the peer pressure to do whatever they say uh, fashions and styles and tattoos and ornaments and tight fitting exposing clothes and you know preoccupied with selfie and all those uh, you know looks and beauty and color and features and uh, pride and superiority complex selfish not sharing with others judging others looking down upon others bullying and teasing and ragging others unforgiving bitter stubborn um, anger rebellious adam and disobedient to your parents rebellious against your parents and teachers and elders in the church and hurting others temper tantrums all those things are actually basically this uh, on a, that category that is a pride of life and that is why uh, we are because of that what will happen uh, and also you know copying in the exam lying stealing all those things will come in that honor seeking and because of that there will be worries also because of uh, you know there will be what in psychiatry we say the externalizing behavior and internalizing behavior externalizing behavior is this anger and arrogant and stubborn and rebellious some people be uh, behaving like that the internalizing behavior is like uh, anxious and worried and uh, low self esteem and uh, you know stress and all those things will be the internalizing behavior whether you know whatever is that it is basically our self our you know our honor seeking of ourselves and that the other side of that coin only is the worries and anxiety and uh, you know uh, even some uh, psychologists uh, say that um, depression is anger turned within you know some people turn the anger outwards and manifest it outwards and some people turn it to within the self criticism and the, uh, that decrease self worth and anger turned within why should i live like that so that, uh, that uh, so in that honor seeking only this anxiety uh, symptoms and depressive symptoms and stress and low self esteem discouragement loneliness worthlessness helplessness hopelessness suicidal ideation suicidal at- attempts identity crisis who am I, who am i self pity fear of scrutiny what will others think they are all looking at me who oh, i am not good enough what will others think about me acting before others you know when we are acting before others will be more stressed out actually <laughs> if we are natural uh, if we are just uh, you know not trying to show off anything but uh, yeah, natural i mean uh, if i act that i know everything then i have to be really stressed out to act that i know everything but I, if i say that oh, i know this much only you know i am not perfect you know this much only i am and what i am uh, you know no time uh, acting like a you know hypocrite the word the greek word for uh, from which that hypocrisy comes is actually meaning acting mm, uh, rosak often uh, quotes there in his sermons and all no so that uh, uh, if there is an acting there would be when we are more natural there will be decreased us and uh, so these are the honor seeking and the worries of this world then pleasures we can more understand the sexual temptations um, you know relationships pornography masturbation uh, you know uh, indulging in watching cinemas and then addiction to this video games and social media video games and social media in its proper proportion is okay but when it is out of proportion it we are indulging in you for your own pleasure uh, you know just to kill time and to just to for your own whims and fancies when you do that and uh, then the substances uh, that is uh, alcohol cigarettes and drugs and all those things and all that are addictive all this comes under the pleasures of this world especially with regard to young people and then the money uh, so i was telling honor pleasures then money and material things is actually you know young people wants the latest brand of clothes and uh, shoes and mobile uh, new uh, latest mobile that bike and jeans and sports items and that laptop this car this house uh, you know i want that i want this whatever i see i want that coveting for everything what i see it is the lust of the eyes that is the world and the material things so when we are preoccupied with all this money honor pleasures of this which are part of our self will our self will what the bible calls us flesh our flesh is basically in our flesh nothing good dwells romans 7:18 and our all our flesh all of our flesh is the same only nothing good dwells and left to our, ourselves left to our flesh we'll be wanting to do all these things but actually 
what the Lord wants us to do. There is a battle between the flesh and the Holy Spirit, which we read in Galatians 5.17. The flesh sets its desire against the spirit and the spirit sets its desire against the flesh. So whether we yield to our flesh, we have God has given us a willpower, which is like the golden altar in the tabernacle, the most holy place in the sorry, in the holy place of the tabernacle. I don't know whether you are familiar with the example of the tabernacle. You know, uh, uh, I hope all of you are familiar. You know, our body, uh, our being consists of body, soul, and spirit. Or oh, spirit, soul, and body in that proper order. First Thessalonians 5:23. And more uh, in the Old Testament, we uh, read of something called tabernacle, which which is a structure which uh, God commanded Moses to build for him to dwell among his people. Exodus 25 onwards we read that. And uh, the most holy place, holy place and uh, outer court of the tabernacle is corresponding to our spirit, soul and body. So what uh, in, in that holy place of the tabernacle there was, uh, you know, uh, adjoining to the golden altar, there was this veil, thick veil. This thick veil is Jesus flesh and Jesus life, uh, Hebrews 10, 19 and 20. Uh, and it denotes our self will. We are telling about our self will now. There is a thick veil that really prevents us from entering the most holy place. In the most holy place, that is in the spirit realm, is our real freedom. So, the real freedom that Jesus gives is in the spirit realm, in the most holy place. And how can we enter the most holy place? Jesus has already inaugurated the way, new and living way for us through his flesh that we read in uh, Hebrews 10 19 and 20. You read in the Gospels that when Jesus died, the veil uh, that demarcated the most holy place from the holy place was torn from top to bottom as if it was torn by the father from heaven not some man trying to tear it from bottom to top but top to bottom from the father in heaven and how we can experience how you know jesus has paved that way and how we can walk through that way and enter the most holy place is actually uh, that is what I was going to tell Exodus 36, Exodus chapter 33, 0 verse 6. You can note down that verse. Uh, there it says that, uh, you know, this golden altar has to be placed in front of this veil. So this golden altar is denoting our willpower, our decision making capacity. Also, there is emotions and uh, uh, our thinking capacity, our mind in the soul. Our soul consists of our mind, our thinking capacity, which is denoted by the table of showbread we can say and the lampstand which is uh, which is symbolizing our emotions and willpower which is the gold which is symbolized by the golden altar so what i am saying the most holy place it is by uh, yielding our self will in our willpower willpower in itself is neutral and in our willpower we have a choice whether to yield to our own will you know usually left to ourselves our self will is ruling our life the thick veil is controlling how we think and do and feel and all but actually the Christian life is when we yield ourselves and say that Lord, I do not want to do my will Lord, I surrender my will. And when I surrender my will, what happens is that the word of God is like a two-edged sword, Hebrews 4.12. And the fire of the two-edged sword, fire of the Holy Spirit in that word of God, uh, you know, flaming sword we read in Genesis 3.24, the cherubim standing on the way to the tree of life with the fiery flaming sword the flame that speaks about the holy spirit and the sword is the word of god the holy spirit and the word of god when we yield to the lord jesus the holy spirit and the word of god will come and tear this thick veil more and more in our life and we are flooded with in our in our self will there will be a death there will be a death to ourself and in the holy in the most holy place the fire of the holy spirit will come down and will flood us with that freedom where there, the, where there is a spirit of God there is liberty we read that in 2nd Corinthians 3.17 when we turn to the Lord the veil is taken away 2nd Corinthians 3.16 says that when we turn to the Lord means when we surrender ourselves to the Lord when we take a bow turn and say that Lord I turn to you I do not want to do my own will when I turn to you the veil that is the uh, self will is uh, torn apart and the Holy Spirit will come and flood my spirit and there is liberty and with unveiled face second Corinthians 3 18 with unveiled face that self will is torn away that uh, veil that flesh is put to death with without that veil I am beholding in the mirror of the word of God the glory of the Lord Jesus and I am being transformed to his image from one degree of glory to another this is what second Corinthians 3 18 says the real freedom is to 
be bound to the lord jesus and become like him more and more and to do his will that is the real freedom and that comes by we surrender ourselves not once for all but every day every moment continually surrendering ourselves is a living sacrifice and initially it would be kind of a struggle for us you know when we learn to do something initially it would be a struggle but actually after some time this will become a way for li- way of life for us that uh, to keep ourselves humble all the time and to be flooded by his spirit and to experience that uh, fullness of his love in our spirit and perfect love casts out fear first john 418 perfect love casts out fear first john 418 perfect love that means when our, when we are flooded with the holy spirit all our fear or for that matter any negative symptom anxiety or stressful feelings or depressive feelings of fear or worries or cares so everything will be dispelled because just like in if a cup is empty there is air in it if that cup is full all the air is displaced like that when our heart is empty uh, there will be all these negative emotions like fear and anxiety and uh, discouragement and everything but uh, if uh, if we yield ourselves and first of all we are cleansed by the blood of christ to have a clean conscience before the lord and when we are flooded by the holy spirit uh, we will be flooded by his love and all the fear and anxiety will be dispelled in our life and isaiah 10:27 says about uh, the anointing will break the yoke uh, anointing uh, you know some version says about fatness the real hebrew word shaman which is used over there means anointing fatness oil everything so the anointing of the holy spirit is the one uh, is the is the thing that can really break all the yokes all the bondages in our life and uh, we can soar in our spirit like eagles Uh, in the as we read in Isaiah 40 31 and these are all not theoretical flowery language but we can experience that and uh, uh, I hope uh, you know this would instill a thirst in you to seek the Lord all the more to humble yourself and to uh, surrender every day of your life and say the Lord I do not want to do my will Jesus says unless you take up the cross and follow after me you cannot follow me unless you do that unless you take up the cross and die to yourself you cannot follow me so that is what i was trying to tell you you know not my will lord you know my will is like this horizontal plank and god's will the word of god god's will is the vertical plank of the cross and there i die to my will and i am empowered in my spirit by the holy spirit to experience his liberty and uh, i think i can go move on to the questions